Oak and Prairie systems are some of the most biologically diverse, culturally important, and climate resilient habitats in the Pacific Northwest. Unfortunately, they're also one of the most imperiled. When people think of Pacific Northwest iconic forests, we often think of old growth conifer. But these interior valleys from British Columbia down to Northern California were historically all oak forests, woodlands, savannas, and prairies. Today, only 10% of those habitat types remain. And in the Willamette Valley, we only have 7% of our oak and only 1% of our prairie. These are the places where people live and where people farm. And that creates an opportunity for us to work hand in hand with private landowners. Most of this habitat type that remains on the landscape is in private ownership. And so working with the people that understand the landscape, understand the history and have a love for this ground creates a huge opportunity. The Willamette Valley Resilient Landscape Initiative builds on significant and continuing federal and state investments into delivering conservation across uh, multiple jurisdictions, so private land, public land, tribal land. And through this partnership, we have focused investments into five major categories, supporting tribal priorities, restoration and stewardship, protection and working lands, species recovery, and really trying to think about how to bolster the restoration supply chain and create a sustainable workforce development program. In 2010, the state of Oregon and the Bonneville Power Administration signed an agreement that permanently settles the wildlife impacts from the dams in the Willamette Valley. Part of this agreement, the WWMP, or the Willamette Wildlife Mitigation Program, was developed to permanently protect these important habitats in the Willamette Basin. And so we have a mitigation agreement from the Bonneville Power Administration to protect a minimum of 16,880 acres by 2025. So they have set aside funding to protect these habitats permanently, either through fee title acquisition or through conservation easement. The state of Oregon elected to work with our partners rather than implement the Willamette Wildlife Mitigation Program independently. So what that means is we work with our partners, including tribes, land trusts, soil and water conservation districts, state, local and federal governments to come together and to protect these habitats and bring in their knowledge and build these partnerships so that we can extend the ability to kind of work together to manage and protect these habitats. We're out here at a place called Herbert Farm, just south of Corvallis this morning. And this is a site that was formerly grass seed fields and has been restored and stewarded for grassland and oak prairie habitats uh, that are representative of what was in the Willamette Valley prior to settlement. What makes this environment so special is the, the human history combined with the biological diversity that this ecosystem supports. Oaks in particular are biodiversity factories. They just produce so much in, the, in an insect community at the base level of the food chain that then translates to bird life and other wildlife. They provide cover, they provide food, they provide just the overall context and sustenance for this environment. And in so doing, they're part of a prairie system where it's not just oaks, but grasslands with huge diversity. Huge diversity of wildflowers, of grasses, of insects, pollinators, birds, animals, deer, elk, you name it. The animals and the wildlife of Western Oregon are adapted to and still live in fragments of prairie and oak habitats in our area. Here today we are at Noble Oaks, which is located in the northwest corner of Polk County. Um, it is a property that the tribe reacquired by way of the Nature Conservancy through the Willamette Wildlife Mitigation Program. Historically, Grand Ronde was the caretaker of the Willamette Valley. The native plants and animals are intrinsic resources to the cultural lifeways, practices, and pursuits of the tribe. 
This area was maintained using indigenous fire practices, which kept the landscape in open prairie conditions, um, including oak woodland and oak savanna habitats. It really takes leveraging and collaborating to be able to move the needle on habitat improvements and restoration on the ground. Um, the tribe wouldn't be able to conduct uh, effective habitat restoration without leaning and leveraging partners across the Willamette Valley. Restoration of sites like this is the result of many groups coming together to get the work done. The Institute for Applied Ecology has uh, installed most of the restoration here, but we've done that in collaboration with many other organizations, including the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, the city of Corvallis, who owns this, this land, uh, and, and many other groups. Part of restoration really involves bringing in plants to get the uh, landscape converted from one form to another. And in this case, it was, it's going from grass seed fields, an agricultural landscape, to a restored diverse landscape. And to do that, we need seeds. Primarily, we work at a scale like here through what we call seed-based restoration. So that means preparing the site and bringing the seeds in and installing them on the ground and then letting them grow and establish and then controlling weeds as they come in. Uh, but those seeds are hard to get. Seeds are not just available on the open market of these species, they're specialty crops. So we work with the Willamette Valley Native Plant Partnership to uh, pool our resources and get the seeds we need collected from remaining wild populations and then put into agricultural production. And when we do that, we're stimulating the economy by supporting farmers. We're enabling restoration to occur by making the plant materials seeds available. And we're hopefully bringing down the cost of, of doing so. So it's a win-win across our economy and our landscape. Our family ranch represented one of the largest remaining holdings of Oregon white oak habitat in the Willamette Valley that wasn't protected. And so it was, a, it was a privilege to be able to put it into protection forever and know that it'll never be developed. And since we made that move with the WWMP program, we've done several white oak restoration projects where we've gone in and, and restored, rehabbed that habitat and to protect these oaks from the fir trees and pine trees that were outpacing them, that were threatening to overshadow them and, and basically drown them out. And so we've made a focused effort on over 230 acres so far of our 1,100 acres of woodland here to protect and enhance that Oregon white oak habitat. As part of our management plan, we had endeavored and we have begun to break the ranch into smaller paddocks so that we could be more prescriptive with our grazing program here and and we've really seen the benefit of that and we're we're hoping that the vesper sparrows are seeing the benefit of that um, it really gives us the ability to to dial in and graze some of those areas where we have more invasives and and that's helping reduce the use of herbicides. And, and we just really think that's been a win-win. And, and I only say we think because I wanna see the proof and the evidence that the Vesper Sparrows are agreeing with that in the way that we're managing the habitat here. Every time we get help from one of the agencies in doing that, that's deeply appreciated and, and helps us do some things we wouldn't ordinarily maybe be able to do. And passing this to our children that next generation, they're already taking over a lot of these different steps and, and parts of the management here. The program is unique in that it actually does provide some stewardship funding to um, project proponents who bring these projects into the program. But what the program does not do is it doesn't provide restoration funding. And so that's a real need with this program and something that our partners have been exceptional at garnering the, the huge investment that we've made in this basin, over $85 million, can only be sustained with this additional restoration funding so that we can keep these projects functioning in the way that they really need to be functioning for wildlife.